Hi, this is Joe Maciarz from A-Tutoring Enterprises. Today I want to talk about graphing rational functions. I want to talk about the equation y equals a over the quantity x minus h plus k. We want to discuss what a, h, and k do. Now if you've seen a lot of my other videos, you probably already have a pretty good idea of what these three particular parameters do, but uh, there may be some of you out there that haven't, and just to be on the safe side, we're going to make sure that everybody knows, so we're going to go check this out. If you already think you know, you may want to just skip to the end or jump around and take a quick look and see if you do know, and then skip on to the next video. But uh, let's get started and uh, get some information to the people that don't know what these are. All right, so I need my graph, or there it is, okay. Uh, on the last one, we had talked about the inverse function y equals k over x, which is very closely related to this. Now, the k that we have here is not the same k that uh, we were talking about. In other words, uh, if I go back to the start screen over here, uh, this k is not the same as the k you just saw. In fact, the k that you just saw is the a that we're going to discuss. So we're going to change some variables around. So let's go back over to the grapher and do some of that changing. So uh, first of all, I'm going to get rid of, well, actually, I'm not going to get rid of that. I am going to get rid of that. These are my asymptotes. We're going to keep those. Uh, we're going to change them just ever so slightly. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and stop that from being animated. We're now going to add a few more things. We're going to add uh, a is going to equal 1. And we're going to add h is equal to 1, just to mess with those two. Actually. Again, I, actually, I'm going to start with h equals 0. Let's put that up there. Let's put a up there. And let's take our k. Let's make k 0. And actually, in this form, this isn't actually going to be very much different. Let me, oops. All right, so that's going to be our a. We're going to have a minus h there. And then we're going to have a plus k. Now, we don't need the parentheses because this division line is uh, basically telling us the whole thing is underneath, so we don't need those parentheses. All right, so there's our function again. Now, uh, the deal is that everything you saw in the last video about changing what was k is exactly the same thing as changing a. Uh, so if we parameterize the a, we're not going to see anything different. Um, except that I may have to change my little minimum and maximum values because they love to change on me. All right, so let's hit that. And you'll recall that basically this was all the same behavior that we had previously. There's the positive A's. And there's the negative A's. Now, again, because the X is in the bottom, uh, when A is equal to 0, basically there is no vertical line to it because that's being disallowed. Okay, good enough. That's what A does. It's, it's exactly the same as last video. If you want to get a better look at that, go ahead and look there. But let's just go on and take a look at what happens when we um, change H. Now, hopefully you have a pretty good idea of what changing H will do. Uh, I want to go up here and again, minus 4 to 4. And let's hit the OK and hit the play button. Oh, sorry, I did forget something. I forgot to mess with these because what happens is the Y goes with the K and the H, sorry, the X goes with the H. So now as I play this, you'll see the vertical asymptote, that's what we call this, the vertical asymptote will actually move with the entire graph. Now, in reality, even though it, it doesn't look like it, the horizontal would move with the entire thing as well. It would be moving left and right, but, you know, it's not visually seen. Uh, I mean, there really actually isn't anything in the equation to, to actually move it, uh, but uh, theoretically it would move left and right with the rest of the graph. I just don't have any way to really do that, so it'll sit as as is okay
All right. Well, that's what H does. Uh, the same things that we've always talked about. Uh, when H is negative, it's on the left-hand side of the y-axis. When H is positive, it's on the right-hand side. But there is that little issue with the minus sign in the formula. So when there's a positive H, it would look like X minus something. And it would look like it should go to the left, but it's really going to the right. And likewise, if H is negative, as it is now, this would be X plus something. It would look like it would go to the left, but it was on, or to the right, but it was actually on the left. All right, now, you've seen this. You know what this is going to do. I'm not going to give any grand prizes for anybody that can figure out what K is now going to do, but because you should know by now, after seeing all of my incredibly wonderful videos, uh, I shouldn't speak of myself that way, because then I forget what, what the heck I'm doing. So, okay, looks like it's keeping K the same. Let's play K. And there we go. Now this time, it's the vertical axis, or the vertical asymptote that's staying still, well, effectively staying still, and it's the horizontal asymptote that's moving up and down with the graph. That's what K is controlling. And um, again, in reality, the asymptote would move up and down, but again, there's no real uh, way for me to actually do that. But you know, be aware that that's the real case. Okay, so that's what A, H, and K do. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, or not so much mention, but uh, let's go ahead and get rid of that, is that if I were just to move both of these, of course, and let me just pick something like 1, 1. So H is 1, and then K is 1. That's going to move everything effectively to a new coordinate system. This, this is actually like there was a new X, Y axis. And notice that, you know, this is with A equaling to 1, you could just graph this like it was just normally y equals a over a, x, uh, over 1, up 1, uh, over a 2, up 1 half, over 4, up 1 fourth, and so on down the line. Uh, so keep in mind that if you uh, especially use your vertical and horizontal asymptotes, then it just becomes a simple matter of graphing the y equals a over x part, treating this as if it's the uh, 0, 0. Okay. I can't think of anything more to tell you about this at this point, so I think that's going to be about it. This is our the easiest type of rational function, a rational polynomial that we can do. Uh, what is a rational polynomial? Oh, I guess there is one other thing I could do. Uh, let's take a quick look at this. Uh, one thing that I could do is I could turn this into a single fraction instead of two terms as it is. And to do that, what I'd have to do, let me copy and paste this. Now, again, ignore whatever graphing is going on here because I don't really care. What we're going to do is basically multiply this by, and I'm going to put a 1 up there to begin with, x minus h over x minus h. Of course, I said that backwards, but you get the idea. Okay. Now, effectively what I've done is I've multiplied 1 by 1, and it doesn't actually change anything, so I actually am getting a black graph on top of the, the green curve. Uh, now, I can put this together. Notice that the k, in fact, let me go mess with the k a little bit. I can treat the k as k over 1. So, on the bottom, I've got 1, minus x, or 1 times x minus h, and this is x minus h. So, both bottoms have x minus h, and I can treat it as an entire fraction. So, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to put an equal sign here. Now it's not going to be happy with me, but again, 1 over. Every, the whole bottom is x minus h, but what do we got on the top? Well, we've got the a plus, now remember, we're going to have to do distributive property here. The k has to hit the x, and the k has to hit the negative h. So when I do that, I'm going to get kx minus kh. All right. What does that give me? Well, what we would do... Again, let me put a 1 over and get my x minus h going. The reason I do that is because it's easier to type type it that way. If I start typing, well, actually, let me show you screwing that up. See what happens. If I start typing a plus x over, uh, or x, uh, kx minus k over, sorry, k times h, and then do an over, well, there you're seeing it. I'm not getting the whole thing over, and it, it's just a real pain in the butt. If Even if I put that x minus h and try to copy and cut and paste, it's, it actually ends up being worse. So uh, just as a, a little word of advice, if you're using this graphing calculator, you want to do a 1 over 
something over, just get, get to the bottom real fast, do your X minus H, you hit your up arrow to get back to the top, then you can just easily delete that and put in the top. So, and I forgot what I was doing there, so X times H, and then it's going to be plus, and notice that the A is a constant, the K is a constant, and the H is a constant. So this is all a constant. So in effect, I've got something that looks a little bit like, um, I guess, you know, let's do our 1 over x minus h again. In the top, we're still going to call it kx, but then this, this other stuff in here is just some other constant. Um, for lack of anything better to call it, let's call it b. And you can see it now is a binomial. We call this a binomial. Bi means two. Nomial means terms. The bottom was a binomial, two terms. Remember, a term is anything separated by a plus, minus, or equal sign. So uh, this is all one main, main term because it's separated by the equal sign. The term has two factors. Uh, factor is anything multiplied or divided. So the top is a factor and the bottom is a factor. Each of those factors have what we might call subterms. Uh, there's two subterms on top, two subterms on the bottom. The two terms on the bottom is a what we call a linear binomial. The x is to the first power. And then you could even consider this h as being times x to the zero, and if that doesn't make sense to you, don't worry about it. But basically, the bottom is a binomial, and the top is a binomial. There's certain features associated with that that we're going to study um, in the next video. Uh, actually, so not so much in the next video, but probably in the video after that. The next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go look at some basic properties of some polynomials, things that you should know before we go study more rational polynomials. Okay, and I don't think I even talked to you about what a rational polynomial is. So let's define a rational polynomial. Uh, to define a rational polynomial, you'll have to talk about a polynomial, uh, but basically I'm just simply going to tell you at this point, because I'll, I'll tell you what a polynomial is in the next video, because we're going to do polynomials, but polynomials are, uh, a rational polynomial is one that has a polynomial in the top and a polynomial in the bottom. So the x minus h by itself is a polynomial. But the kx plus b by itself is a polynomial. So this is a polynomial over a polynomial. We will call that a rational polynomial. Now despite the fact that it, the name says rational polynomial, this is not a polynomial. Uh, this is considered not a polynomial, as a matter of fact. Uh, again, why? We'll talk about polynomials in the next video. Uh, but basically, I just wanted you to see that this old form that we had here could be transformed, and here, here is the old form right here, can be transformed into something that looks like this. And sometimes they'll study this as well. Uh, but um, that's going to be it for, for today's video. Uh, as I said, next time we'll study some basic features of polynomials, things you should know before going into rational functions, and uh, then we're going to start to study hardcore some of the properties associated with rational functions, things like vertical asymptotes and, and how you know which way the curves should go around them, uh, horizontal asymptotes, whether there will be horizontal as asymptotes or not, uh, there will be holes in your function some very exotic types of mathematical things, very different from all the graphing we were doing previously. So um, that's something to look forward to. We may have to break that up into two or three videos, but uh, you know we'll get it done. We'll get it figured out. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's go to the last screen now and uh, get a little exit out. So today we were studying the beginnings of graphing rational functions. We were studying y equals a over the quantity x minus h plus k. All right, and we were asking what a, h, and k did. All right, uh, my little business is A Tutoring Enterprises. My name is Joe Maciars. That's my website that has all kinds of information about uh, my online tutoring and my in-person tutoring, uh, hours and times and things like that. My email is right there. Uh, my phone number, if you're local or in the United States, you want to call. If you're somewhere else, you may want to do the email. Um, I do tutoring in physics, math, chemistry, and engineering. So if you need some appointments or some help, let me know. Uh, liking me is the brave thing to do. 
Yeah, it's from a movie. Can anybody remember the movie? You know what the movie is? I'll give you a hint. Uh, think All in the Family. I don't know if some of you know that reference. Not not some of you younger ones you may not know. All in the Family. It's a television show back from the 60s and 70s. Uh, if you really like the video, besides liking it and maybe commenting on it, uh, if you if it helped you out, feel free to send me a dollar or two to my PayPal account. Um, consider it shareware for the brain. And um, if you really liked it and you think I can help you out, yeah, let's make the appointment and get you some help. All right, uh, we're now going to go to a white screen where basically all kinds of little links will be popping up. You'll see the links to the next. Uh, I'll probably put all the uh, rational uh, polynomial videos in when they're ready. Um, and uh, a few links to some of the other stuff. You'll see some uh, A, H, and K stuff previously, and you can start to go back and look at that if you need to. Uh, I hope you like the video, and uh, I hope you look at the next one and maybe a few of the other ones along the way. And uh, other than that,